Almost a year ago, we brought a small mob of pigs to help us restore our plot of land. We were amazed how, right from the start, they seemed very calm, and we put this down to buying them from a property who ran their pigs free range. Our stock are a cross of large black and Wessex saddleback, renowned for their foraging ability. You can do it! You can do it! <laughs> scary, scary I believe in you. <laughs> We specifically wanted pigs previously trained to respect electric fence to make them easy to contain and direct their pig dozing powers. She likes me cutting her. You're the Diane Fossey of swine. It was also important to us that they quickly got used to us handling them in order to develop rapport and make caring for them easier. Apples destined for waste were a welcome addition to the Hearts and Minds campaign. Nice and gentle. The electric fence proved perfect for a high level of control on where we put pig pressure on our weed infested fields. And the pigs enjoyed foraging at each new area. They are naturally curious and found moving day a happy event. In general, they were happy and content. Until Jimmy arrived. Part of our plan for food independence was to breed our pigs, and one of our new friends gave us a very impressive boar on loan. As a matchmaking ploy, we arranged a bit of a pig party to break the ice and let Jimmy display all of his best qualities. It seemed to work and Jimmy was accepted by the girls. After some months, the sows ignored Jimmy's advances and we figured piglets were on the way. We made arrangements for our big boar to take his talents elsewhere. With an improvised dirt ramp, two buckets of apples and a borrowed trailer, we arranged our pig transport. Come on, Jimmy. Moving a 300 kilogram boar takes some power, but we were happy that Jimmy seemed unperturbed by the operation. The problem we have here, particularly now that we've got a pig right down the back, <laughs> is that the tow ball hitch is not going to hit the tow ball. So I have to bring the tow ball up to the hitch We'll get it on, then we'll get rid of this jockey wheel and see if, uh, see if we can make it all work. <laughs> so it's just one of those, just another unexpected little, <laughs> little uh, detour in the journey. When you're mucking around with animals and, and farming, I guess. I think we've got it. Jimmy's yeah. just totally not helping by standing down the back. <laughs> see if we've got it. Okay, so it's good. Oh, the jockey wheel's off. Nice. So that was a pretty, a pretty easy resolution to a, a bit of a vexing problem. And that ends the first part of the story. Jimmy now lives by the sea and is doing well, and our sows made some rapid weight gains. Well, two of our pigs um, looked like they were about to pop at any moment and have piglets, so I started to... I started to build this shelter for them. It's just a lean-to, you know, they can hollow in on the other side because the prevailing wind and any of the weather's coming this way and also the afternoon sun, so it'll give them a bit of shade if they want it. But it seems I'm a little bit late, so <laughs> Pasky's already over there. Um, come and have a look. Very exciting. We have 12 little tiny piglets. They're only a few hours old. We went away this morning and then when we came back this afternoon, um, Troy came down to try and build a bit of a shelter because we knew Copper was going to have her babies but she's already had them so um, they seem pretty content here like nestled up against an old bit of fencing here 
and um, we've already watched them have a feed. Hopefully Cop Copper comes back and um, they'll have another feed soon. But we've got nine girls and three boys and they're all so gorgeous. They look so healthy. There's none that look really small or runty. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased. <laughs> they're so cute. How cute are you? You've still got umbilical cord. Oh, you're calm. You've got blue eyes. Hello. I'm really pretty. I have blue eyes. <laughs> you are so cute. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So she's got beautiful blue eyes and she's so calm, this little one. Oh, my voice is probably a bit loud. But she's really calm. She's not squealing or getting too upset about me picking her up. Can we keep her? Can we keep her? Pretty cute. This has been a really great benefit of the way we've raised these pigs, having lots of contact, but now that she's had a baby, look at that. She's not angry at all. She trusts us a lot. That's really nice. Hello, little one. No. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this um this part of the, the property we've been bunching up these leaves from from elsewhere around in the paddock bulldozing in here and then we just left the pigs to make their own nest i did um i did try and do that little lean to and we'll see if they make use of it but to be honest it's pretty nice under here if you're a pig Copper's piglets grew amazingly fast and were ready to explore the world in about a week. So behind me, Prosciutto's just given birth early this morning. So far there's six piglets. I think that's it. But when I came down, like there was one that still had the, the membrane-y sack on it. So maybe there'll be more coming. There's a little bit of an issue and it's a bit noisier than it was with Copper's birth. Um, three of the piglets, three of Copper's piglets, the bigger ones, have come and they're stealing Prosciutto's milk. But she thinks they're her piglets. I think they actually were with her while she was giving labour, so um, they've been with her all night and she thinks they're her piglets. Um, we can't really remove them because she's very, very aggressive and defensive towards us at the moment, so it's really frustrating because they're stealing all of the best colostrum milk, but I don't even know if there's anything we can do. We put her in here so she could farrow without the other pigs around, without the other piglets, but these three have pushed through the fence and come to be with her, so bit frustrating but maybe she'll have some more we'll see but six healthy piglets so far which is great so we've had a we've had a number of battles with these little piglets and they've they bested us in every situation so we've we've come to this so we've got our electric net it's not energized um, and we've slanted it coming into the ground so that they can't just dig straight under it but they still had the knack of lifting it up with their snouts so we've weighed it down all the way along and they were running around it, so we've sent them back into the into the paddock. But we'll have to see. Because we're weighing it down, um, we can't energise this, this fence. And to be frank, at the moment, the ground is still so dry that even while I'll get a shock and the big ones get a shock, the little ones don't. Oh, look, there's one testing the fence now. Let's have a look. While we watched, the piglets were unable to get through, but a hungry pig is nothing if not persistent, and we returned to find them back in the game. Very nice. Can you get the other black one? Oh, yeah. We discovered that by dragging the piglets along the ground, they wouldn't shriek and trigger the defensive aggression of this particular sow. 
We arranged a temporary holding cell from our 6x4 trailer cage while we sought another solution. Repeat offenders. Our next move was to modify our sorting pen as a farrowing yard, complete with straw filled, farm built shelter and lure the mum in with food. Meanwhile, Pasky went to fetch the rest of the family. So all the piglets are in this really great little spot between two tree trunks. It's a great spot that prosciutto's put them in to be safe. They're completely safe here. On a farm, no object can have just one job. Prosciutto's taking a bit of time out from defending her babies to eat an apple. <laughs> so, um, I think she's pretty happy to have her young ones here now. And we've, we've got this A-frame here um, and we've put it in our um, sorting corral just to, just to have a little bit of a farrowing pen for her. Hello, on the scam. Well, that was a pretty good test. Um, prosciutto was calling for that little piglet to come on in. It wanted to get in, no one got in, so it's all right. So despite herself, she's gonna to have to just feed her piglets. <laughs> I'm really glad that we taught our pigs to drink from a um, one of these water nipples early on and as soon as they were introduced they sort of got into it pretty quickly but now wherever we want to put them putting a, a water point is really really easy it's nice if i've already got somewhere i can put a hose but in this case we've just put one of these cubes in ibc there's 400 liters in here <laughs> so, so that should keep it going for a little while it's in the shade so it'll stay nice and cool and that's important for a pig with Prosciutto settled in with her piglets, it was time to release the raiders back to their own mums and see if we'd finally succeeded. Wow, they're so healthy. All that colostrum, huh? <laughs> Reunited. Reunited. <laughs> so unfortunately this little piglet got abducted this morning by our dog. I found her on the in the yard with it in her mouth, but she seems to be coming good. The dog knew it was very bad. She knows it's very bad. She's right next to me. She's very ashamed. But it's really amazing how tough these little pigs are. This thing like was pretty much, I think if we hadn't have wrapped it up and we've given it some goat milk, I just sort of syringed it in and now I've got this little teeny tiny baby bottle. Um, I think if we hadn't have got some fluid into it, it wouldn't have made it because I just found it. We put it back with its mum when Jet took her and then I went and checked on it 20 minutes later and it had just walked out into the sun into the middle of the pasture. So it was like perishing in the sun. So I grabbed it and um, gave it some milk and wrapped it up and it seems to be doing a lot better now, which is good. They're pretty tough little piglets, so hopefully this one makes it. It's only three days old. so. It didn't take the rat pack long to find their meal ticket again though. These are the smallest pigs in their litters, so the chance of getting some of the milk of another litter is well worth striving for. A few hours later, we discovered a weak point they could exploit. If 
if you had told me what it takes to keep a piglet away from a lactating sow, I never would have believed you. <laughs> I'm going to have to grab two out of there now. Well, it's been a couple of hours now. It looks like we've actually succeeded in our battle to uh, <laughs> to thwart the t the piglets. But um, gee, it was a it was a hell of a battle. It has been. It has been, and they're very sneaky. <laughs> So um, if you see here, I, I've had to um, just temporarily put a bit more sheet metal around this corral <clears throat> and I've also had to go and get chicken mesh um, and then there's two gates from this sorting pen, there's one on the back and the mesh is just ever so slightly bigger than the front one um, so the piglets were actually squeezing through there <laughs> so insane. Um, we've popped some chicken wire through there Hello, cat. What do you want? It's close to dinner time. Yeah, <laughs> it's been particularly affectionate because he wants his dinner. So we we had to uh, put some wire there, and it's frustrated the piglets. But uh, anyway, Pasky, a little bit of bad news. That yeah, little piglet. sadly, our little um, three-day-old piglet. It didn't make it through the night last night. Oh, everyone else is looking super healthy. Um, everyone else is looking good, and now every, they've got their best their best chance. <laughs> cat. <laughs> now they have their best chance of um, of making it because those other three aren't stealing all the milk. Um, we think it was totally worth all the efforts. Um, if you see this footage here, there's a really good comparison of those piglets and, and just what a couple of di what a difference a couple of weeks make. So this is prosciutto's brand new piglets. Their ears are still rolled back, and you can see they barely look like drowned rats compared to these robust little piglets. So mm -hmm. um, you can see why those other runts were getting in here because they were just absolutely king of the heap you know totally. they, they could just push those piglets away yeah um, and another yeah. complicating factor was i think prosciutto actually thought that they were her... oh she totally thought they were her piglets because they were there when she was in labor yeah when she was giving birth yeah. but, but i also think that she thinks that those are really great piglets and the rest are runts yeah yeah so the, the longer they stayed in there it would have really the been worse the downfall. it would have been yeah um, yeah anyway so but those three, they're eating solids now. They're more than three weeks old. They're like three and a half weeks old. So they're actually fine. If they, Even if they're only getting like a little sip of milk from the other two pigs or none at all, they're going to make it. They're strong. They're robust. I think we can say that they'll be all right. Um, well, we do hope you enjoyed the episode. Mm -hmm. um, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, welcome. We've been getting a lot of new people, so um, that's really great. Yeah. If you enjoyed the episode, I mean, there's the, there's the thumbs up thing if you like, but don't forget, word of mouth, we appreciate that. We've been seeing we've been seeing new faces. They've heard of us from their friends. So yeah, yeah don't be scared to tell people if you've enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I think we might wrap this up just by leaving everyone with some uh, gratuitous piglet footage. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, sounds great. <laughs> See you guys next time. Okay, cue the cuteness. <laughs> <laughs>